welcome AO Kids families. I'm so glad you joined us today for more fun and learning as we take a closer look at faith. We learned last week that we might not be able to see God with our eyes, but we can see everything that he made. We can take a look at his big story in our Bibles and we also can see all that he's done in our lives thus far. Let's take a look at the Bible definition of faith found in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 1. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and being sure of what we do not see. Let's head over to the gym for this week's fun and games, which will require quite a bit of focus. Hello and welcome to Game Time with Amanda. I'm Amanda. Today we've got an awesome game with donuts. Let's meet our contestants. Hi, what are your names? My name is Colton. And I'm BJ. And why are you going to win? Because I love donuts. Fantastic. Hi, what are your names? Emily. I'm Craig. And why are you going to win? Because we sing opera. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hello, and what are your names? I'm Natalie. I'm Alan. And why are you going to win? Because we're hungry to win. Great! So, today we've got donuts that are tied to a string. Each team is going to have one person sitting and one person holding the end of the string. The person sitting will have to eat the donut as fast as they can without dropping it on the floor. If it drops on the floor, you're out. There'll be two rounds, one with the kid eating and one with dad eating. Are you ready? Yeah! Kids, take a seat. Dads, pick up your donuts. Ready? Get set, go! All right, we've got some good donut eating already. It's gonna take a lot of focus to make sure that the donut doesn't fall. We've got a few bites in. Oh, Colton is really going for it. Good job, good job. He's got a good stance going. Natalie's just laughing. <laughs> Oh yeah, Natalie's really going for it. She's got a lot of bites, but she's bitten all over the donut. <laughs> Colton is about to win, he's doing good. But will he be able to keep the donut on the string long enough to eat the whole thing? That is the question. Oh, and Colton's has fallen on the ground. Oh man, we've got two contestants left. We've got Natalie and Emily. Oh, oh no, we've got one more. Our default winner is Emily, because hers is the last one standing. Good job, good job guys. Now it's the dad's turn. Ready, get set, go. Got some good hustle. He's eating that super quickly. You gotta finish it though, you gotta finish it. BJ's gotten the whole donut in his mouth. Man, it's like he's been preparing for this his entire life. Craig going pretty strong too. He's got his donut, he's got his donut. And it looks like BJ is the winner. Great job contestants. Now we've got some prizes to hand out. BJ, you won for the dad's round. Why do you think that you did so good? Forgesons have big mouths. Ah! So you guys won for the kids round. Why do you think you did so good? Because of my opera training. Fantastic, you guys also get a half a dozen donuts. And you know what? You guys definitely tried. What do you think went wrong? We clearly need to eat more donuts. Apparently. But you know what? That's okay, because we got you guys the rest of the donuts. Victory! Okay, kids, I hear you have a special surprise for your dad. Happy Yay! Yay! Why don't you feed your dad the donut? That's all for today. See you next time.
Last week, we started to look at stories with focus. We met a man named Saul. However, Saul was focusing on the wrong things. So God stopped Paul with a light. This light was so bright that it blinded him. And then we saw how God used another man named Ananias to heal Saul's blindness so God could show him the right things to focus on. Saul was so excited about his new faith, he started preaching right away. However, some people started to recognize him. And that's why Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. Hey, this guy is really good. He is. He's answering every question the leaders are giving him. Hey, I think I know this guy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he does look familiar. Yeah. Isn't, isn't he the guy the Sanhedrin sent down here? No. You're not thinking that guy Saul, are you? I mean, yeah, he has to be, right? Oh, I thought he was sent here to go after all the Jesus followers. Weird. And now he's preaching the gospel. Hmm. Well, there's got to be something to this Jesus guy. Greetings. What news? Has Saul really lost his mind? It certainly appears so. Something must be done right away. A plan is already in motion. If Saul tries to leave the city, he will most certainly be caught by the guards. Good. Do not fail me now. What, what, what's with that? Are you like a Sith Lord or something? Who? Ah, uh, never mind. Saul! Saul! Uh, Barnabas, yes? I have terrible news, Saul. Have the prices of figs gone up again? No, I mean, yes, but the temple leaders are hunting you. This was bound to happen. You must get out of the city. But where are you going to go, Saul? Where else would I go? I, I still have questions. I must go to Jerusalem. No, no, Saul, you can't go there yet. They still fear you. Oh, right, the whole stop or I'll kill you thing. Uh, yeah, that. Oh, okay, okay. They know me, right? And I know you. So if I go with you, it'll be all right. Thanks, Barnabas. This looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Now then, how will I escape the city? Oh, I know! I'll lower you over the wall! I think we need a bigger basket. Don't you mean boat? What? Basket, right? Ah. And you're gonna get in it, and I'm gonna lower it down. Okay, sure, but what if you drop me? No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I got this, so. Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you won't fall. Uh huh. Sure. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Sorry, Paul. Almost there. Okay. I made it. Thanks, part of it. Yeah, sure thing, Paul. See you later. Oh, right. Saul was able to escape from the guys that wanted to capture him. 
and he continued on his journey all the way through to Jerusalem. However, when he got there, the disciples still didn't trust him. That is until Barnabas came along and explained that he really, really was a changed man. Saul traveled all over Jerusalem with the disciples, preaching the word with them. That is until it was time for him to flee again. Throughout the Bible, we read about so many people and situations trying to stop God's church from growing. But because of the courage and the power of the Holy Spirit, God's church kept on growing. People had to focus and keep on courageously telling others about Jesus. Let's think about some people that had to have huge focus. For example, first of all, we've got Ananias. And Ananias focuses on what God asks him to do. He courageously goes to Saul and is able to help Saul get his eyesight back. We've got Barnabas who has to tell the believers that Saul is trustworthy. And finally, let's not forget about Saul himself. We saw that Saul was out to get God's people and to be super mean to them. And in this story, we see Saul completely turns around. He focuses on God's will and courageously goes out telling people about Jesus, spreading the good news. One of the things that we learn is that as we know Jesus, we're able to overcome our fears. Let's pray for courage like Saul, Barnabas and the believers we heard about today. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm asking you that you please help us be courageous. Create in us a heart's desire to know you more and more and to show your love to others and to share the good news with all that we meet. We need you, Lord, always. Thank you that you're always there for us. We love you, but know that you love us way more. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do for us. And all God's people everywhere said, Amen. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you next week. I hope you have a terrific week. Bye-bye.